should be able to see a nice picture of him. Uh, Steve Bigelow, somebody as, as you know, and hopefully you've had a chance to, to look at some of the other classes we've done with him, but we're always happy to have him in the room. He always has really good classes, and, um, and uh, I'm excited. So, Steve, let's go ahead and bring you on here. All right. Well, uh, uh, thank you for uh, having me back. Uh, I've been, my name's Steve Bigelow, I've been doing uh, candlesticks by accident for over the last quarter of a century. I was a stockbroker back in the uh, mid-70s uh, mid to early 80s. Uh, got out of the business because I realized that the major uh, Wall Street firms didn't know any more about when or how a stock price is going to move. That's why the old philosophy is you buy a good company and you hold on to it and it will work out for you because they don't know how to time the market. Uh, somebody by, uh, I was in the real estate business. I was buying property, renovating homes and reselling them when somebody dropped uh, candlesticks on my desk and they said, you were a stockbroker. Uh, what do you think of this? Well, it took me about three months of them badgering me because I figured anything as sophisticated sounding as candlesticks couldn't be all that worthwhile. But as I looked at it, the thing that kept striking me was that this was just common sense put into a graphic depiction. It was showing how, uh, how uh, uh, just, just taking uh, common sense investment practices and uh, putting them on a chart. Oh, I got to learn how to advance. So. What I did was uh, I went through the charts, and this was uh, antiquated back then. I was waiting for charts to come out of California each weekend and uh, start on the new charts. But I just went back and I used the candlesticks to identify where the or I identify where the obviously where the peaks and the valleys were in a stock price, and then I would see if there was any signals at the end or at those uh, spots. So what I uh, discovered was that out of the 50 or 60 signals that are out in the candlestick universe, there's only 12 that we need to learn. So I'm going to kind of go through uh, through the candlesticks uh, fairly quick and then show how they're used for identifying uh, high profit patterns as well as uh, uh, at least putting an investor in the right direction at the right time. Now, I've enjoyed working with Jeff Gibby. Um, let's see. Is there sound? Is it? Why is it breaking up? I wonder. Um, is there sound problems? All right. Okay. But uh, and uh, the more I see of Metastock, the more I keep seeing. Man, oh man. Uh, candlesticks are set up to where they put the probabilities in your favor. But Metastock has a bunch of techniques or, uh, oh, I want to say, information gathering devices to even further that, uh, putting the probabilities in, in uh, your favor. So as I went through, or as we go through this, I tell people, you don't need to take notes. We're going to go through fast because... Uh, candlestick analysis is merely just identifying where the uh, signals are occurring and where a trend change. So we want to, we're, we're essentially going to learn real quick is how to identify pullbacks versus reversals, how to spot support and resistance price targets, how we identify the high profit stock moves using candlesticks, and how do we use candlesticks to identify the uh, 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 the uh, how do we identify or how do we analyze when the trend is moving? So the first thing I learned about stock trading after uh, applying candlesticks was that prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals, and that's merely what uh, candlestick signals are. Is they are the graphic depiction of fear and greed. So the most common. Let me see if I can move this little arrow. Oh, I can. Um, the most common, uh, oh, who's it's, uh, or the, the most uh, important aspect of a candlestick analysis is, yep, I see that, uh, is that the signals are the accumulative result of everybody's knowledge that is buying and selling that particular 
and I'm going to use the word stock for any trading entity during that time period. And that time period is uh, fractal, meaning candlestick signals work just as well on a daily chart, a weekly chart, or a monthly chart for long-term investors as they do on the one-minute chart, the five-minute chart, and the 15-minute chart combination for uh, e-mini traders or uh, commodity traders. So the basics, very simple. The Japanese rice traders took the uh, notching and they enclosed. If it opened here and closes here, uh, you got a white candle. If it opens here and closes below where it opens, you get a dark candle. That does not necessarily mean uh, the price is up or down on the day. All they're doing is identifying what happened to investor sentiment after the open. So out of the 50 or 60 signals, I discovered there's only 12 signals that you needed to learn. And once you learn those signals, not only will you identify where a reversal is going to occur, but the Japanese rice traders, after 400 years of identifying and utilizing the uh, signals, um, uh, not only the, the, the uh, house that uh, uh, used these signals not only became wealthy, but they, they became legendarily wealthy. They were the powerhouse in Japan for centuries. So out of the 50 or 60 signals, there are only 12 that you really need to learn. We're going to go through them real quick. And so essentially, what are we looking for when we're looking for uh, uh, or looking to use signals or patterns? We're basically looking for the situations that are going to create very high profit situations. Number one, telling us when to get in and when to get out. So you see a lot of people demonstrating how they made big moves here and big moves here. I don't really give a hoot about what happened here. I want to know what's happening here. Whoops. I'm using. I want to know what's happening here before these big price moves. And that's essentially what candlestick analysis does for us. So the first uh, signal is the doji. The doji is very simple. It opens and closes at the, about the same level uh, each day or each time frame. If uh, the price move during the day is big and it uh, closes right where about it opens, long-legged doji. If it closes, opens and closes at the top, it's called a dragonfly doji because it looks like a dragonfly. And if it's a uh, uh, opens uh, at the bottom, comes up and goes back down, it's a gravestone doji because the Japanese rice traders pretty well describe it as the warriors coming out of camp, going into battle. By the end of the day, they're beaten back into camp, thus leaving dead all over the field and leaving or having a gravestone doji. A spinning top is a derivative of the uh, doji. It's where it opens and closes in a relative close uh, price range of where it uh, opened um, but all these represent the same thing it's indecision occurring between the bulls and the bears so the Japanese rice traders created some very simple rules if you see a doji at the top it's time to take profits if you see a doji at the bottom you need bullish confirmation uh, to tell you that there's been a change of trend or the Japanese rice traders say the weight of the market can continue to push the market down. Uh, let's see. And they say always take heed uh, when you see a, see a doji because it means there's something going on between the bulls and the bears. But here's where we make our big money. The, just a very simple rule of thumb, not anything set in stone, but the trend we usually move in the direction of how they open it the next day after a doji. That information becomes extremely valuable, especially if you're uh, looking at support and resistance levels, and we'll get into that. Now, the nice thing about candlesticks is that the Japanese rice traders put the common sense, human emotions, into a graphic uh, depiction. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. And that is usually represented by a gap up or a big price move or... Uh, big candles at, in the overbought area. Now, as before we go too much further, let me uh, tell you what my charts look like. I use stochastics, and these are my stochastic settings are 1233. If you're in an overbought condition, it's when the stochastics are above 80. If you're in the oversold condition, it's when the stochastics are below 20. 
Also on here we have moving averages. We've got the 200, the 50, and the 50, and, and the 20 day moving average. These are all simple moving averages. The, the reason we use those moving averages is because all the money managers in the world use those moving averages to make decisions on when they're going to get in and out of positions. Now here's the most effective one of all. This is probably has some sort of derivative uh, value as uh, John Bollinger's uh, uh, Bollinger Bands, uh, Dave Elliott's Mobo Bands. Uh, uh, this is the eight exponential moving average, which is we, what we call the T-line or the trigger line. It has a very, very simple concept to it. That if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay in that position as long as you don't see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. And there's one caveat to that that makes it even better, is that the further you move away from the T-line, the more likely you're going to come back and test it. So that makes it very simple. If you see a candlestick uh, reversal signal, such as a doji, way above the uh, T line, take profits because the worst case scenario is it's come back, test the T line, and start back up. You can always buy back in. Now, the reason uh, we demonstrate this type of uh, trading uh, uh, confirming indicators is what is one of the major fears of most investors? They would really hate to sell out a stock that they're making big profits in and now everything's great and this thing could just go through the roof. You could buy new cars, new houses with where this stock is going. Everybody's afraid to take profits because what could happen? It could go right up here without you and boy would you look stupid if you sold here and it went to 100. The nice thing about candlestick analysis is it's got extremely high probability showing you when it's time to be out of a position. Um, when you start seeing that exuberant buying and then a doji, start thinking about taking profits. Notice how far away you've moved from the T-line. Now this is not rocket science. You don't have to know formulas. You don't have to ha have any technical background. All you have to know is that dojis tell you there's indecision, and if it's occurring in an overbought condition, darn, I'm showing these with, uh, occurring in an overbought condition, and you're away from the T-line, the probabilities are it's time to take profits. That doji tells you there was something that there was a change of investor sentiment or exuberance. Here's a gap up spinning top doji in the overbought condition. Right at the 200 day moving average, where do, where do you think when people were buying down here what they thought their next target was going to be? The 200 day moving average. The nice thing about candlestick analysis is we can see graphically and immediately what type of investor sentiment is going on as, at uh, uh, important technical levels. Again, here's a nice uh, run up, but where did it, was it time to take profits? When you started seeing exuberant buying and a gap up, uh, kind of a dragonfly doji. There's another doji up here. This pretty much was all the top, so you got the majority of this move. I'm not interested in selling out at the exact top or buying at the exact bottom. I'm more interested in getting the majority of that price move and when the risk starts to start growing up or getting too high, move on to something where you're buying down here where the risk factor is much lower. Again, uh, doji, doji, doji uh, in the overbought area away from the T-line is starting to take, start, time to start taking profits. The bigger this signal is, the more indecision, the higher the probability you're going to see a reversal or a change of investor sentiment. The blue line is the 50-day moving average. Again, the 200, the 50, and the uh, gray line is the 20. All simple moving averages. The black line is the 8 exponential moving average. So there's a... Uh, Again, when you see a gap up in an overbought condition, start watching for a sell. So it's very simple. If you see a doji in an overbought condition, if they open it lower the next day, 
That tells you exactly what they're going to do after that day of indecision. It's time to get out. You're going to start a downtrend. Now, remember, this is all information built or identified by Japanese rice traders to tell you that there's a change of investor sentiment coming. And if this is a day of indecision, there's times where not only do you want to sell, but you want to get ready to go short if they gap it down. A lot of people were told don't do anything with gaps because you don't know what the price is doing. A candlestick signal followed by a gap is your best friend because it basically tells you what is happening right after that indecision. That there is going to be, uh, that if there's indecision and they're gapping it down the next day, it tells you after that indecision they've made a decision they want to get out of there very quickly. It's time to start shorting. A lot of people use candlesticks on their charts just because of the clarity is so much better. Here's IBM with a doji followed by a gap down and a gap down through the T-line. That tells you there's been a definite change of investor sentiment. Stochastic's heading down. Where's your next probable target? Probably back down here to the 50-day moving average. Is that your only probable target? No, there's probably Fibonacci traders out there. You put your Fibonacci numbers on and see where your 38, your 50, or your 62% uh, retracement uh, is, is uh, going to occur. So again, if you see a doji at the top, take profits. Doji's at the bottom. If you see a doji at the bottom, what are you looking for the next day? Bullish confirmation. Another good aspect about candlestick analysis is that if this is all based upon investor sentiment and has very simple rules, such as if you're in the oversold area, you see a doji, and the next day they're buying, where's your stop area? Well, if they open it positive and start taking it positive, that tells you there's a change of investor sentiment after a candlestick reversal signal. It better not come back down and close below that signal, or that's not, that tells you the bears are still in control. You get out of the position immediately. Um, this is part of that sage advice that everybody is given, that you cut your losses short and let your profits run. I've been in the business for over 35 years. And I've never heard anybody tell you how you cut your profit or cut your losses and let your profits run. Candlestick analysis has very simple trading techniques that tell you when it's time to get in, and it also tells you when to re be right back out of a bad trade so you can go on to the next one. Doji, doji, followed by a gap up the next day. Very simple rule. If you see a doji in the oversold area and it opens positive, you want to be buying especially when they gap it up. If they gap up after a uh, in the oversold area after a doji, that's what we call your best friend because you're going to make lots of money with that setup. Again, there's that doji followed by a gap up. Starts a very strong uptrend. Now, again, I've, as I say, mo I've run into hundreds and hundreds of people that use candlesticks on their charts, but they just don't know how to use them, which I... Tell people that's kind of like uh, that's kind of like the uh, the story of the uh, Indian kid that uh, left the reservation, went to Harvard, graduated top of his class, went to Wall Street, was making millions of dollars when the uh, reservation called him up and said they wanted him to come back and be chief of the tribe. So his heritage was much stronger than his will to make money. So he went back to the reservation. First day he got back there, he was in his teepee, and all the elders came in, and they said, "How much wood should we collect for the winter?" He had absolutely no idea. So he said, go out, come back in an hour, I'll have an answer for you. As soon as they left, he flipped open his cell phone, called the local weather st station. He said, what do your indicators look like for this winter? And the guy there said, oh, they look like pretty much like they did last year. He, they, so the uh, Indian chief folds up his phone, calls everybody back in. He says, all right, go out and collect the same amount of wood as we did last year, but collect another two weeks just to be safe. So they all did. A few days later, he called up the weather station and said, how's it look? Still the same? He goes, oh, it's going to be a little bit colder than we expected. And so the Indian chief said, okay. So he called everybody back in, and they said, he said, we better go out and get another two weeks' worth of wood just to be safe. And so they grumbled a little bit and went out, got the wood. A few days later, he called the weather station. He goes, uh, how's things still all right? And he goes, no, it's going to be a little bit colder than we thought. 
And the Indian chief said, okay, called everybody back in and said, hey, listen, we better go out and get six weeks' worth of wood just to be safe. So they all grumbled and went out. And uh, so uh, they collected the wood, and he, he called up the weather station a few days later. And he said, what's, uh, what's your indicators look like now? And he said, oh, man, we're going to have one of the worst winters we've ever had. And the in, young Indian chief said, what the heck is wrong with your computer indicators? Can't they keep anything straight? They said, oh, we don't use computer indicators. We watch the Indians. The more wood they collect, the colder the winter is going to be. So I tell people, if you don't know what your signals are telling you, that they don't really do you any good if, if you're using them on your computer screen. So here's a case where uh, if one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means indecision. And notice what we have right here at the end of this indecisive trading range. Um, we have a doji followed by a gap up through the T-line. That's a in stochastics coming up. That makes for a very perfect time to be buying into the next uh, price trend. Uh, doji, 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 gap up through the T-line, strong price move. Doji, gap up. Very strong price move. A doji followed by a gap up is giving you information that after indecision, they're, they're, somebody's ready to buy. Doji followed by bullish confirmation. Uh, when you see a gap down in an oversold area, where do most people sell? They usually panic sell at the bottom. So if you see a gap down in an oversold area and see a doji, start watching for a buy signal. And if you see a doji occurring right on what we'd consider a major technical level, like the 50-day moving average, and you see bullish confirmation occurring right afterwards, it's time to be buying. The probabilities are greatly in your favor that the bulls are now taking control. And I use the term probabilities because uh, that's basically what the investor, or what the graphic depiction is showing us is chart patterns that have reoccurred in investor sentiment year after year, decade after decade, century after century. Investor sentiment is not going to change. All the Japanese rice traders did was identify the patterns and the signals that uh, were created when these changes occurred. This is what we call a, a doji morning star type signal right here at the 50s, starting an uptrend. I better start whizzing through these. Doji, doji. Uh, strong uptrend. The more dojis, the more uh, the higher the probability the uptrend is going to be uh, fairly strong. The bigger the uh, series of indecision, the more, higher the probability you're going to have a nice strong uptrend or a profitable trade. And that gap down or that doji followed by a gap up the next day indicates very strong uh, uh, trend reversal. So if you see a gap down in an oversold area, start watching for a buy signal. If you see a gap up from a doji in the overbought area, start uh, buying aggressively. That gap up tells you not only was there indecision, but now that decision from the bulls is very strong. The more they gap it up down here in an oversold area, the higher the probability the uptrend is going to be very substantial. All right, so the same rules. Doji at the top take profits. Doji's at the bottom needs confirmation. If one doji means indecision, a number of dojis means greater indecision. And the trend will usually move in the direction of how they open it the next day. Again, that's very important. Here's a left-right combo. This is a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal, which will be the next signal we go after. But that left is the indecisive doji followed by a bullish uh, signal that completely engulfs the doji. Uh, tells you that that's the, the decision they've made, that uh, indecisive, now very decisive, usually creates a very strong uptrend. Left-right combo, doji, bullish engulfing signal. The same occurs uh, at the other end of the spectrum, too. A doji followed by a bearish engulfing signal, which we'll get to, uh, is also a very strong uh, sell signal. And if we see the signal occurring right on a major uh, support level, I mean, again, it all has all the uh, indications that there's been a reversal, and not only a reversal, but the reversal is going to be substantially strong. The bullish engulfing signal 
shows that when it closed here, the next day they opened it lower. And then where it opened here, they closed it above that level. This candle completely engulfing the body of this candle. Not necessarily the shadows, but just the body. And it stands out like a sore thumb that there's been a change of investor sentiment. Bullish engulfing. And now trading above the T-line, you stay with it until you see a sell signal. The bigger that signal is, this is what we call a bullish booster. Because not only did it was do a bullish engulfing, but it had a big tail down here that acted like a booster rocket sending it up in the opposite direction. Now again, this is not anything where you have to learn formulas. All it is is visual recognition of signals that tell you especially in the uh, right conditions of the uh, trend, that there's been a change of investor sentiment, it's time to be going, uh, going in that direction. Another little bullish engulfing signal on a pullback tells you the next, uh, uh, next move is going to be up. Let's see. Oh, I forgot. If you've got questions, uh, yeah, feel free to ask them anytime. For candlesticks, is a gap defined as where the candle bodies do not overlap? Not necessarily the bodies, uh, uh, but also your uh, your uh, uh, trading range, your shadows. Now, again, you can still have a gap up even if the uh, trading range doesn't uh, uh, isn't separated. But it's just the idea that if you see an indecisive trading day and then they gap it up in a direction, it's uh, time to be buying. Uh, the T line is the eight exponential moving average. It just simply means that if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you're in an uptrend and you see until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T line. Bearish engulfing signal opens above the previous day's close and closes below the previous day's open. This candle completely engulfing the uh, bullish candle of the previous day. And if you see them occurring at important technical levels, that just basically tells you they've failed at that level and they're taking it back down. But if a bearish engulfing signal, especially with your stochastics up toward the overbought area, and at the same, anything that you can identify, like the same uh, area that it topped out before, gives you all that much more probabilities that there's been a uh, change of investor sentiment, you're going to be heading down. Bearish engulfing after a doji type day, that's your bearish left-right combination, usually a very strong predecessor of a uh, of a downtrend. There's your doji followed by a bearish engulfing signal. Bearish engulfing signal. Bearish engulfing signal. Basically tells you the bears are in control. The bigger the signal is, the more compelling the downtrend is going to be. And here's a very simple rule uh, for taking profits. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So if your stochastics are already up in the overbought area and you start seeing them gapping it up, use two simple rules. If it opens and starts trading higher, you put your sell stop one tick below where it opened. The rationale is if there's something good happening, it's going to keep going up. If they open it higher and they bring it back down through the open, that tells you there's probably exhaustion up here. On the other hand, if they open it and immediately start selling it off, you put your sell stop one tick or right at the uh, close of the previous day. If it comes back down through there, it's going to do some sort of candlestick signal after gapping up there at the top. Um, uh, telling them apart. Uh, I don't know what to tell you there. Just because of the graphics or just because of the, you don't know which one is which. They look alike. Okay, well, the dark candle, obviously, is where they, it's, it's opened up here and closed down here. The white candle is where it's opened here and closed above where it opened. Okay, so that's... Uh, and then the indecisive trading, spinning tops, is where the bodies are very small and the tails are uh, more predominant. So that's... Uh, yeah, the T-line is the exponential moving average. 
And that's so that's why you want to learn the candlesticks. Here's what we call the hammer. I lied before. There is a formula that you have to know for candlesticks, and that is the number two, that the tail on a hammer signal is two times greater than the body, and the body can either be black or white. And it basically tells you that the bears have hammered out the uh, bottom of the market before the bulls stepped in. So that tail is the uh, graphic, and if you, again, if it occurs right on a potential support area and it opens positive the next day, you want to be a buyer. And that if they open up positive the next day, that that tells you that the uh, the bears are out of the way, the bulls have taken control. You're going to see an uptrend. Where's the stop loss? Well, if they open up positive, that means they should be taking it positive. They should not be closing it back down below the uh, the head of the uh, or the uh, hammer. If they do, the bears are still in control. You're right back out of the position. Hammer, 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 bullish confirmation. Again, the tails to the downside are what uh, uh, starts alerting you to a possible reversal. Again, stochastics in this case are in the overbought or oversold area. Stochastics in this case were kind of slowly moving back and then uh, supporting on the uh, uh, the 50-day moving average. Anything that you can see that is acting as support, you want to be uh, using that to your advantage using to be because of the graphic uh, uh, information that's built into candlesticks. There's your, uh, where's my little arrow? There's your hammer followed by a gap up through the T-line. Basically stay in this until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. A gap down in an overbought, I'm sorry, a gap down in an oversold condition. What's that tell you? That tells you that's where all the panic selling is. So when that panic selling, the the best or the best thing that ever happened to me was being the worst investor in the world because I could identify where I was usually selling out. I couldn't stand the pain anymore, and I'd be selling out at the bottom. And my next question would be, how come when I sold, it started going up after that? And the question is, when I'm selling, panic selling at the bottom, who the heck is buying down here? It's usually the smart money. So anytime you see that gap down in an oversold condition, start buying. You're probably going to have an uptrend, or at least a uh, one or two day trade to the upside, unless something changes that uh, uh, right after you get in. If you see a gap down, whoops. And then they gap it back up. That's your abandoned baby. That's a very strong reversal. That's like that little uh, one-day island reversal. The hanging man is the opposite of the hammer signal. The tail's to the downside, and the uh, head is up toward the top. Um, basically, that's the inverted uh, uh, rationale for uh, bulls. Bulls are happy, the bulls are happy, the bulls are happy, and then, oh boy, all of a sudden there's some nervousness. They're taking it down, but by the end of the day, they brought it back up. Um, the bulls are relieved, and they shoot. That was a close one. Well, the next day, they start selling it off. The bulls say, shoot, the bears are still here, get me out of here, and that's what usually starts a strong downtrend. A bearish harami. Meaning the selling has stopped and a gap down, a slight gap down from where it was closed the night before. Telling you the bears are in control, you want to close it out immediately. Let's see, what did I do? Oops, I'm hitting the wrong buttons here. I don't know. Oh. This is the uh, piercing signal. Piercing signal acts a little bit different in the sense that it opens below any of the trading of the previous day. That's the shadow. So it gaps down, but then it closes again at the number two, more than one halfway up the previous day's candle. This now becomes a piercing signal, which requires bullish confirmation the next day and is apt to start a good strong uptrend. And let's see, down here piercing signals. They're gapping down and then coming back up into the uh, halfway point of the trading range. 
Let's see. Do, 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 do. Piercing signal opens below any of the previous day's trading in the oversold area. There's those gap downs telling you to start watching for a buy signal. Now you have a piercing signal. Let me get my arrow. You have a piercing signal followed by a gap up. That's uh, that's definitely a strong uh, reversal signal. Those gap ups are your best friend. Little piercing signal. Starting a very strong move. Where did they move it to? Right up to the 50-day moving average. Why could we see it? It had stopped there because we started seeing the uh, uh, selling occur in our charts. A dark uh, cloud is a, a, a stronger uh, or a bullish move. What did I just say? And then they gap it up. And again, here's that aspect where if they took it up from there, you just put your stop right here. If they immediately started selling off, you close it one tick below the high of the previous uh, trading day because if it comes back down through there, it's going to have some sort of a, a candlestick sell signal forming that day. The bigger that gap up, the more compelling the downtrend is going to be. Dark cloud, just a uh, dark cloud over uh, a nice sunny uptrend. Tells you the bears are starting to take control. There's a shooting star. Looks like a shooting star with a body at the bottom with a tail down behind it. That basically tells you the bulls have taken it up. And again, what happens when you see a gap up in an overbought condition? You start looking for a candlestick sell signal. Again, this is not rocket science. This is merely... The graphic depiction of a change of investor sentiment that the Japanese race traders have identified for hundreds of years. And the reason we're looking at them today is because they work. This isn't theory. This is what the Japanese race traders put into practice and became legendarily wealthy from this. So a lot of people, I, when I ask them in the early days, why, aren't, why isn't everybody using candlestick signals? The answer was that there was too many of them, and they didn't always work. Well, as I studied through them, because I wanted to learn everything I could, every single signal that would make me money, I did discover that out of the 50 or 60 signals, only the 12 really were used probably the majority of the time. The other ones just happened occasionally. So I tell people, know them, but don't learn them. Just kind of browse through the books occasionally and recognize them. So that if you do happen to see one, you don't have to know what it's going to do. You just have to know that it's a signal and you can go back to your reference book and figure out what it's, what it's doing. But the 12 major signals are what occur time and time again as the uh, major signals or the uh, signals that are, are working probably 99.9% .9 of the time when there's a change of market trend. Again, that shooting star tells you it's time to just watch for lower prices. Whenever you start seeing these tails to the upside, start watching for a, a sell-off uh, after that. The opposite of an inverted or of a uh, shooting star is the inverted hammer. Bears are happy. Bears are happy. Bears are happy. Then, oops, they're trading it up. The bears are nervous, but by the end of the day, they're relieved because it closed down near the lower end of the trading range. Then the next day they open up positive. The bears say, shoot, the bulls are still here. That get me out of this position. And that's what uh, starts the next uptrend. Also, if it opens positive, what does that tell us? It tells us we should be in an uptrend. We should not come back down below the head of the uh, uh, that uh, signal or that uh, uh, the reversal signal. If it comes back down through there, the bears are still in control. You want to get out of the out of the position right away. Let's see. Uh, whoops. Oh, I forgot to read some of these. Uh, would it be more preferable to use a daily chart than hourly? And it's not that the preferable in, in the lower time frame. Uh, author, it all depends on what uh, how long your trades are. I if I'm trading. Uh, I'll swing trades, which my trading for stocks is usually anywhere from a two to ten day holding period. If I see a stock that has now moved up nicely and gotten into an overbought condition, but it doesn't look like it's time to sell yet, 
Then I'll start switching down to the 5 minute and 10 minute chart to see what it's doing on a uh, on those charts. If I see on the daily chart that it might be a time to start watching for a reversal. I'll use the shorter term charts to, to act as a, a warning for that. How many bars average into the teen line? Well, it's the 8 uh, exponential moving average, so I'm guessing 8. Inverted hammer. Gravestone doji followed by a gap up the next day leads to a very strong price trend. Oh, Willie, can you go back to the last page? I don't know what... Uh, just ask a question if you remember it uh, from that chart, Willie, and uh, I'll see if I can answer what it was was doing. T-line 8, exponential average, yes. What happened if we are hanging in at the bottom? A hanging man at the bottom is a hammer signal. So they're, even though they're the same formations, one's occurring, telling you the top of the trend is stopped, that's the hanging man. The uh, hammer signal at the bottom tells you the bottom uh, is probably put in. Uh, I use the 34-day uh, moving average, uh, usually more on my commodity trading. Um, yeah, we can get the slides out to everybody, but we'll, we're going to have an offer here that uh, is even better than that. Are you going to talk on identifying pullbacks versus reversal? Yes. We're going to, first we're going to get through the uh, signals. I guess I'm I guess I'm on time. We started about 10 minutes late. Inverted hammer, gap up, stochastics in the oversold area. Going to start a very strong, uh, uh, very strong price trend. Inverted hammer, gap up. Very strong price move. Oops. Inverted hammer. Spinning top. Hammer. Bullish confirmation above the T-line. As you can see, this one stayed above the T-line and used the T-line as support. Until we started seeing candlestick sell signals away from the T-line. Uh, it was time to take some profits. And there's that in little inverted hammer followed by a gap up. Uh, let's see. This is called a bullish harami. A bullish harami in Japanese means pregnant woman. There's her body and there's her little belly sticking out. Tells you the selling has stopped. So what do we want to see after... The, Supposedly the selling has stopped. We want to see it open positive or trade relatively positive and start trading positive. Again, the further we move away from the T-line, the more likely you're going to come back and, and test it. So uh, you get that clarity by seeing a bullish potential signal. And as soon as you see it confirming the next day, you close out the position because that's exactly what you don't want it to be doing, especially if you're short at the time. Bullish Harami on a uh, uh, kind of a bearish signal basic, basically tells that the, uh, again, the selling has stopped. It's, uh, uh, the bulls are starting to step in. Bullish Harami right, Harami right on the, uh, whoops, keep using my own cursor, right on the 50-day moving average. High probability there's been a change of investor sentiment. Bullish Harami, Doji, Gap Up. Started this trend all the way up until we saw it gap up in an overbought condition and then pulled back uh, right to the T-line. But this would have been a perfect spot that if it opened higher and traded higher, you put your stop right here to take profits. And if something happened where they, uh, uh, where they opened it and immediately started bringing it down uh, up here, let's see, that's, I'm not using, that's where you start taking profits. Now, how do we tell the difference between a reversal and a pullback? Because when it got right down here, we could see there was indecisive trading, and they started it back up. Stochastics coming back up. We knew that this was a J-hook pattern versus a full-scale reversal signal or reversal pattern. Uh, I don't have the uh, U.S. dollar chart up here tonight. I trade the dollar. I trade the dollar much more than I would trade any forex. 
only because it's much easier to see what one stock's doing on a uh, or what a, uh, something like the dollar is doing where it doesn't have as many outside influences as we have in stocks where we've got interest rates gold prices oil prices everything that might affect uh, what the market was doing uh, bullish harami tells us the selling has stopped bullish harami tells us this pullback has stopped it's time to start uh, getting back into that position Bullish Harami tells us the selling has stopped, followed by a gap up, tells us not only has the selling stopped, but the bulls are coming back in with excessive, excessive force. You're looking for a buy signal plus excessive force to push, uh, uh, push this trend to the upside. Another, I'd say, bullish Harami right here on the... Uh, 50 followed by a gap up tells you you're in a, going to be in an uptrend and you're in an uptrend again as long as you stay above the T line you don't see a sell signal and a close below the T line there are candlestick sell signals in here but they aren't confirmed so the, what the T line does is it acts as a very efficient trend analysis tool that keeps you from getting zig, zigzagged in and out from time to time bullish harami right on the uh, uh, darn it right here on the 50 back up above the T line you stay long as long as you don't close below the uh, 50 bullish Harami right on the 50 notice how it's slowly moved back to the 50 where do most people buy if you're an institutional buyer they're probably waiting to see if it's going to support at the 50 before they start committing funds what we have again as an advantage is that we can see exactly what's going on in investor sentiment once it gets to those important technical levels where is my arrow so right here we can see that slow pullback until the bullish harami tells us the selling has stopped a bearish harami tells us the buying has stopped and if it opens lower the next day it tells us there's going to be a downtrend the bigger these signals are, the more compelling the downtrend is going to be. Again, a big move to the upside. Next day told us that that upside move is stopped. We're going back down because of that bearish harami. And any signal that has a doji as part of that signal is also probably much more powerful in its message. That uh, that indecision right here is a uh, bearish harami has more compelling evidence that the the downtrends in progress are going to be in progress bearish harami downtrend bearish uh, harami where's my arrow followed by a gap down that's when you want to start going short bearish harami with a little gap down starting uh, downtrend big Uh, this is considered an evening star. An evening star has three days to it. Dark day, a day of indecision, and then the third day closes more than halfway up this dark candle day. The more, higher it closes up above it, the more compelling and the strength of that reversal is going to be. Uh, morning star signal. Where's my... I've lost, there it is. Down day, day of indecision, third day closes more than halfway up this candle. Morning star signal tells us the bulls are starting to take control. Another morning star signal right here on the uh, 200 day moving average. That tells us exactly what we want to know that the big money is buying at those levels. Morning star signal. Down day, day of indecision, doji, and then a gap up and a close well above the halfway point and above the T line with stochastics coming up. Those are all the formulas to tell you there's been a change of investor sentiment. You're going to have a good strong run after that. An evening star signal, big uh, bullish day, a day of indecision, and the next day they close more than halfway down this candle. Tells you there's been a definite change of investor sentiment. 
And if they start gapping it down, uh, more compelling, and the bigger the signal is, the more compelling the downtrend is going to be. What is the stochastic period? It's 12.33. Uh, yes, Jules, I not only have software, but uh, I've got three books out, two of them oriented toward identifying the high profit uh, reversal signals and the high profit patterns, and then a third book that says if you use the probabilities built into candlestick signals, you can pretty much get rid of your own emotional bugaboos that help keeping you from making money in the markets. And this, that book was not written on any uh, sage advice. That was written on the fact that if I was the worst investor in the world and candlestick signals helped me get rid of my emotions, that's basically what uh, you want to have helping you out, is using something where all the emotions are taken out of your trading decision. It's, you're just using the probabilities of what's going to happen next. Some are the... Uh, Oh, on the X or on the uh, moving average. I'm sorry, on the stochastics, it's just simple moving average. Um, all right, read the second one. High profit candlestick patterns. Um, how does the software work? I don't have software. What I have found through the years is you can't. Nobody has developed software that shows you where signals work accurately because. What we're looking at when we see something visually is we've already built in the information that immediately is computed into our mind, which is different than trying to write up the formulas to tell you when there's been a reversal. You definitely have to have the signals working at the right stage of a trend. You need to know which way the direction of the market is. Uh, you need to know how long the trends existed one way or the other. So there's lots of elements that if you tried to write the formula to... Uh, for each of the signals, you'd have, I mean, you'd be constantly adding to it, uh, and that's what's happened. I've had uh, research groups at Cornell University, uh, University of Houston, a few brokerage firms in uh, the city of Houston, option trading firms, all their under, or their uh, formula writers say, we've given up. Uh, because we keep thinking of more information we have to add, and it just kind of mushrooms. So I tell people, just learn how to, to identify them visually. Then you can trade any market you want to, any time you want to, whether you're trading off the one-minute chart or off the daily chart. I hope I answered the... Uh, the third book is how to get your emotions out of, the, uh, out of your trading uh, uh, prospect. Here's the most powerful of all the signals. This is the kicker signal. It opens here in a downtrend and closes down here. The next day they gap it at or above the previous day's open and start going the opposite direction. The investor sentiment's been kicked in the opposite direction. The website did that all without a cursor. Downtrend, they gap it open at or above the previous day's open and immediately go this way. A bearish kicker is you have an uptrend, opens here, closes here. The next day they gap it down and go the opposite direction. This was me. I'd be happy as a pig in doo doo in an uptrend, uptrend, uptrend. And then they gap it down on some news, and I wake up and say, oh man, what should I do here? Well, maybe they'll bring it back up a little bit so I can get out of it, and then they'll take it down. Well, if they're in an uptrend, they shouldn't be gapping it down below the previous day's open. That tells you something has gotten the bears in control, and you want to be out of it as fast as possible. So anytime I see a bullish kicker, I want to be buying immediately because that's one of the strongest price or change of investor sentiment, which usually lasts for an extremely long time into the next trend. Kicker signal, even with stochastics. Stochastics don't aren't a consideration, but they're an added benefit if it's happening in an overbought or oversold condition and closing above the T line. You're going to stay in that uptrend until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Again, a kicker signal opens at or above the previous day's open and goes the opposite direction. You're going to have a good, strong trend to it after that. The kicker signal is the strongest of all the, all the candlestick signals. Here's what we call a flutter kicker signal. It's where you have a down day, and then the next day they gap it up and do a doji. 
Well, what do we know about the simple rule of a doji? We know that it's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. So if they open up positive, you're buying immediately because that means they're probably going to be moving in this direction. And if you took out this doji, you'd essentially have a kicker signal. And what do we know about the kicker signal? It's one of the strongest signals in the uh, candlestick universe that there's going to be a change of investor sentiment and a strong trend after that. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, right. Yes. On commodities, would moving averages do you replace with a 34? I don't replace them. I just add the 34. But I'm still using the T-line. The T-line usually works most effectively on uh, uh, even on commodity charts. Would you repeat the name of the book to get your emotions out of the trade in the name of the author? Uh, the book is Candlestick Profits. Eliminating Emotions, and the author is Stephen W. Bigelow. All right, so, whoops, I went way ahead too fast. Can I go back? Gaps represent enthusiasm, and if you go apply them with your candlestick signals, again, a candlestick buy signal and a gap up afterwards is your best friend. Also, if you see a gap down in an oversold condition, start watching for buy signals. Now, you knowing what the information is built into each of these signals allows you to take advantage of high profit patterns. Fry pan bottoms, dumpling tops, cradle patterns, there's a bunch of them here. We'll go through them real quick. But essentially, what we're looking for is this is what we call the J-hook pattern, where it pulls back and we can see that it's not pulling back. It's time to be back in. Are there times where we can get into a stock one day at 15 and get out three days later at 45? Yes. It doesn't happen often, but the nice thing about candlesticks is that if you do what the patterns are telling you, the probabilities are greatly in your favor that you will be in these type of situations. It's just, uh, again, just identifying where the high pressure is coming into or bullish or bearish pressure is coming into a price move. How do you identify pullbacks versus uh, reversals? Because we can see what's happening on an uptrend. This is a J-hook pattern. It pulls back. Pulls back to where? Right to our T-line. And then we start seeing indecisive trading. Well, how do we know it's indecisive trading? Because we know dojis and spinning tops aren't decisive. And that indecisive trading is now starting to curl up, getting ready for the next move. Fry pan bottom. What do we expect from a fry pan bottom? Whoops, we're using the wrong cursor. Fry pan bottom is a slow rounding, indecisive trading. You couldn't trade this worth beans because it wasn't going anywhere. And then as it comes out the other side, the enthusiasm breaks it out to the upside for big, uh, big price gains. Uh, this one, I forget, but we made lots of money. If we could see this is a fry pan bottom... Number one, you can see that's indecisive trading. You couldn't trade this if you wanted to, but you can identify there's a fry pan bottom, which is a slow rounding bottom setting up. How long is this going to last? It could last another three or four weeks. So what do we do? We put a buy stop right up above the highs, which also represent the uh, same level over here, that if it comes through that level, they're probably taking it up now instead of staying in the fry pan bottom. And if it comes up to that level in one day, that usually means you're in a breakout. You stay with it until you see a sell signal. Uh, here's a simple case. Where's my cursor? This is the common of what happens. Notice how far away they moved from the, uh, the 50 and brought it right back to the 50. Did a left-right combo. Where's our next target? The 200. Got up here to the 200, did a gravestone doji and a shooting star, pulls back, and then does what we call a T-line crunch. When they can't close it below the T-line and the T-line is still coming up to that resistance level, they're going to push it through. Once it goes through, it's usually a strong breakout. There's your kicker signal. Where's my cursor? Kicker signal a while back in... Uh, Mako made us very good money on that that run. So this is not where you're, uh, or that anybody is a great stock picker. This is 
just identifying and knowing what information is built into these uh, signals and patterns. Here's the NASDAQ today. We can analyze that once it got to the top of this trend channel, there was our doji followed by a gap down. Which way do you think they're going to be taking it? They're taking it back down to where? At least to the bottom of the trend channel. So at least we know how to uh, uh, position our portfolio, that we might be taking profits on some of the longs that are uh, showing weakness, and we have some short positions on our portfolio. But the nice thing about candlesticks is I could have been using the cursor. There's our doji at the top of this trend channel and a gap down. Um, so we're expecting it to come down here to the bottom of this trend channel. And the advantage we have is once it gets to the bottom of the trend channel, we can see what type of signals are occurring to see whether they're going to take it back up to the top of the trend channel. Oops. Analyzing the trend. Uh, this was the Dow a couple months ago. We knew that it was, break, it was breaking down. What should, where was our next logical target? Down here at the 200-day moving average. So we're short once they start breaking down. This becomes very simple. That once we see some, there's hanging man signals up here at the, at the highs. Now they're breaking down below the T-line. We've got a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. Where are they going? They're going down until we see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. Oops. Uh, so at that time, we're finding stocks that are breaking down below the T-line. Where do we think our targets are? They're heading down uh, until we see buy signals. Here's what we call the dumpling top. It's the opposite of the fry pan bottom. Notice what happened over here. Doji, doji, doji below the T-line. Now they're starting to break that one down hard. Uh, oh, this one is supposed to be right behind the uh, NASDAQ. But even though we're in stocks where the market's pulling back, we do have stocks that as long as we follow the simple rule that here's our kicker signal, we stay in it as long as you don't see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. This is ISIS, is what we call one of our steady eddies. That we've got this in the portfolio and we're hanging on to it as long as we don't see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. That, that lets you sleep easy at night, is that very simple rule. As long as you don't see it close, it close below the T-line, you stay in the position. Another one, Dean Foods had the gap up. And we knew what would happen after a gap up, probably a 45 degree, which is this type of move, a steady move up. We stay in it as long as we don't see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, which we saw a couple of days ago. We close this position out. Where is it logically going to? Probably back to the 50. Another one that we've held on to, PCYC. Uh, we stay in this one as long as we don't see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. So if this one after a kind of a bearish engulfing signal opened lower tomorrow and started trading down below the T-line, we close out the position. Now what's the worst case scenario? They take it down and then they bring it back up through the T-line. If, if it's all in one day, you buy it right back again. You haven't lost anything except you eliminated the risk of hanging on to something that might have left you way down here. Or over the next two or three days, it pulls back, and then you start seeing indecisive trading and coming back up. You know you've got a J-hook pattern setting up. But the, to illustrate, after seeing what the market has done over the last uh, month, these have been exceptionally strong price moves after candlestick buy signals. On the other side, we could see that the market was rolling over, we're finding stocks that are rolling over and starting to break down. This is CA, or I'm sorry, SA. So essentially all we're doing is applying common sense to our portfolio management that if we see the market heading down, we want to find shorts that are going to go along with it, that are trading below the T-line. PAAS, we shorted this a few weeks ago. As long as it stays below the T-line, we're in a downtrend. So there's not anything rocks or rocket science to all this. Um, 
And the biggest thing that I've found about people not using candlesticks through the years is they thought they were too difficult to learn and there was too many of them to learn. Well, now I have it broken down to where all you have to do is learn the 12 major signals. Once you learn to identify what they look like and understand the psychology that created them, you pretty much have control of any trading uh, market that you want to. You can use it independently or with all the uh, technical indicators that you have at, uh, available on Metastock, um, basically what it boils down to is the more parameters you can put in your favor with candlesticks being the overlay, uh, graphically showing you where the reversals might be, it's just them putting you in the positions where the probabilities are greatly in your favor you're going to make money with them, whether you're on the long side or the short side. So what I'm doing is trying to make it irresistible. And let's see if I can do this. Bah. No. Um, what, we're, what we have is what we call a 5 for 15. And let me see if I can find the darn link. Oh, poo. Steve, I'll get it for you. Keep talking. Okay. It'll take me. All right. I think I've got it. Now I've got to figure out how to get back to the. Uh... All right. Let me see. It's... Now let me see if I can get back to the. Uh... Where we were. There we are. I think I can stick it in over here. Paste. All right, for 15 bucks, you get our set of uh, uh, training packages. We call five for five. These are five training packages, which usually retail for about 581 bucks. Uh, got this mixed mixed for a 12 for 12, but actually it's five for 15. Yeah, so if you hit that uh, that link that we've just put on there, you get. Uh, that $581 worth of training, which basically shows you how to enter and exit trades using candlestick signals, how to scan for the best signals each day in less than 20 minutes. Um, I forget all the other things we have in there. How to use the candlestick signals to dr dramatically improve your your emotions as far as uh, keeping your emotions out of your trading. Um, so that alone is worth $581 plus you get 30 days free trial to our website. And our website is the candlestickforum.com. We do a training session every Monday and Thursday nights. Thursday nights is free for everybody. Monday nights is for members. But also in your free membership, you get access to our chat room, which goes on all day long. And you get a lot of information because you've got people that are looking for the same chart patterns as everybody else. And you get you can uh, expedite your learning process. Um, I also put out two or three stock picks each day in a video format, not so that people just have stock picks, but they can learn what the rationale was for those picks. Uh, I, I don't like to just give out picks without people learning learning them because you don't get anything out of it. It's almost like the uh, cop that's standing on the street corner and he sees this car weaving down the street. So he blows his whistle, pulls the guy over, and there's a drunk sitting there at the front seat, and he looks in the back seat, and there's a penguin sitting there. He goes, what the heck are you doing with a penguin in your car? And the drunk said, oh, I found him out on the street, and I don't know what to do with him. And the cop said, well, take him to the zoo. And the drunk said, oh, I didn't think of that. Well, the next day, the cop's standing there on the street corner, and here comes this car weaving down the street, blows his whistle, pulls the guy over, and the same drunk walks up to the window and looks in the back seat, and there's a penguin sitting there. And he goes, I thought I told you to take the penguin to the zoo. And the drunk said, yeah, I did. And he liked it so much, today we're going to a baseball game. So if you don't really know what you're doing with the picks, it doesn't, doesn't help you learn anything. So, um, again, for Metastock uh, users, and right now Jeff and I are in the process of writing up the uh, formulas for high-profit uh, uh, reversal signals and patterns for uh, Metastock. And... As long as he keeps prodding me, we will get it out fairly quick, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Um, but come try our website for 15 bucks for 30 days, plus all this extra information. 
um, you'll you'll see a definite. Uh, let's put it this way: no matter what you're trading now, what mechan or what uh, technique you're using, if you overlay candlesticks on top of it, you're going to have a huge uh, increase in being able to visually see uh, much more clearly what your trade should look like. Uh, let's see: is it better to get your book since I am using Ninja Trader? Uh, yes, the book is. Uh, uh, yeah, books books are good for. Uh, I guess. Let me do this. Anybody else in the room here read the books? I'll let them tell you whether they're worthwhile or not. Um, any of your books cover today's lecture? Uh, Martin, it covers everything. But those books are. Oh, uh, um, pretty much. Uh, yeah, starting from start to finish on candlesticks. Um, all right, any other uh, questions? Let's put it this way. I was one of the worst investors in the world until candlesticks came along. And uh, uh, now I take money out of the market consistently. Uh, because essentially all we're doing, we're not trying to... to Discover where the uh, next uh, Dell is. All we're looking at is where is the profit uh, or where is the uh, the pressures for the bulls and the bears showing up. And if we can identify those signals that tell us where the uh, buying is coming in, we just know the probabilities are greatly in our favor. We're going to make money with that trade. Now, do I make money with every single trade? Absolutely not. I probably would project that I've got about a 65 to 70 percent uh uh, correct trade ratio but what that does for me is the correct trades make big money and I know that the incorrect trades are going to be about 30 or 35 percent so I'm already mentally prepared to say all right if I put this position on I'm watching to see what is confirming this uh, position as it goes forward or if I see in a signal immediately that tells me the bears are back in control, I'm right back out of that trade and moving on to the, another chart pattern that shows me where the probability is again in my favor. So that's the uh, process for cutting your losses short and letting your profits run, uh, which Candlesticks does have a process for doing it instead of just preaching that, uh, uh, that, that practice. Uh, what weekdays do we enter for your free page? Uh, for the free uh, night session, it's Thursday nights. Just go to the website. Up in the top left, it shows Stock Chat, and it will show you how to download Obnovia and uh, come in there. And, uh, uh, again, we're, uh, you'll see uh, uh, the demonstrations using uh, of, uh, different chart techniques and some of the uh, applications that we have with Metastock on finding the best trades. Oops, scrolled right up past me here. Um, this 15, uh, 5 for 15 package can be studied independently of what of what platform is used. Right, for this is used, this is candlestick analysis. You can trade it on any, I mean, all you're doing is looking at the chart patterns, whether you're trading stocks, options, bonds, uh, commodities, tulip bulbs, anything that has fear and greed in it. Candlestick analysis is the graphic depiction of that fear and greed. Um, thank you, John. And see, could you please tell us once more the periods of the moving averages and the T-line? The T-line is the eight exponential moving average. Then the rest of them are simple moving averages, which are your 20, your 50, which was the blue line, and the uh, red line was the 200. Those are where you're watching to see what the big money is doing as far as making their decisions. And, again, we have the advantage of seeing what their decisions are immediately based upon what candlestick signals we see appear at those levels. Your information on what you say to buy could be clear. Or has someone call me? Thanks. Your information on what you say to buy could be clear to have... Okay. Yeah, I goofed up because we're. Uh, I was trying to change things, and uh, my Snagit went on the blink, and it kept shutting down the computer. So we ran out of time. And fortunately, poor Jeff 
has to scramble around and uh, uh, cover my butt as far as uh, making everything run smoothly. Um, let me see. No, I can't do it from this end. Uh, uh, but let's put it this way: the uh, you're going to get you get about five, uh, probably six or seven hours of uh, video information on the uh, uh, oh on the uh, five for fifteen plus the access free access to the website. Now, what will happen is you get free access to the website. And then after they after that, if you want to stay on, it's ninety seven dollars a month. But the advantage of ninety seven dollars a month is that we do for members about two or three training sessions each month where we may spend a Wednesday training session for an hour uh, on uh, how to look for excellent entry and exit strategies for getting in and out of positions or how to scan for uh, the best possible trades, or how do we use uh, bullish or bearish uh, put spread, or yeah, put spreads or call spreads or credit spreads um, for trading options? So each month, there's probably somewhere between two and three hundred dollars worth of extra training that is all free for members. Uh, so essentially, what we're trying to do is instead of selling more product we're trying to sell more or not more but the members get access to more uh training information and they can do it with live with me on the uh the training uh so that if, if there are questions they can clear them up right there uh this is a new product from the ones in the forum uh yeah this is a different package uh what you might have gotten eduardo was the uh the 12 for 12, which was the 12 major signals. Uh, the names of the three books is High Profit Candlestick Patterns. Uh, that's the uh, second one. Profitable Candlestick Trading was the first one. And Candlestick Profits, Eliminating Emotions, is the third one. Do you talk more slowly in the videos? Uh, Michael, yes. Uh, and a session like tonight where I've only got maybe uh, an hour, I try to talk fast. And uh, But that's why I tell people, don't try to take notes. Just sit back and watch because the evidence is mostly in the charts themselves. Um, and so I just try to talk as fast as possible to give as much information as possible uh, while we're looking at the uh, videos or, or at the charts. Um, your videos run independently of trading platforms. Yes. Um, oh, and that's what we were going to do. Also, people that showed up tonight is we've got a free uh, um, one-year subscription, which is 907 bucks worth of value to one lucky winner in here. So as soon as I finish the questions, we run the little computer spin and... Uh, uh, somebody will win a free uh, annual uh, uh, prize to the uh, Candlestick Forum. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, so uh yeah, we have we've got contacts with Ninja Trader also. Let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, uh, is a yeah. You when you order it, it'll it will show you how to how to obtain it immediately. Let's see, where do we find the replay of this webinar? Oh boy, I didn't think of uh, vi video. Uh... Oh, okay, you've got it, Jeff. Good. Okay, so the winner of this uh, 12 month hold on it's aha Wow. 
well, this ain't a fine howdy do. Hold on, a computer. I got a little computer gizmo here that uh, that will. I've got a set on spin, and it will go through the names. Okay. Um, Whitney. Is there a Whitney in here? You're the winner of a one year uh, free subscription to the Candlestick Forum. All right, and so if you will just contact, whoops, I thought uh, uh, she has to come to Houston and pick it up herself. <laughs> nah. uh, let's see if I can do this properly. If you will send a note to Abraham at uh, candlestickforum.com. Oh, you're in Dallas. All right. Um, just tell them that you need to sign up, be signed up. You won the uh, free annual membership from the night before. Oh, Simon, I don't know how you do that. So I and I should know because, but if you have a problem getting through tonight, uh, just do the same thing. Uh, send to Abraham at CandlestickForum.com and uh, tell him that you were th with the Jeff Gibby group with Metastock last night. Okay, any other questions I can answer on candlesticks? I appreciate everybody staying late. Well, it's not that late. We're usually done at 930. Um, so thank you again. And Jeff, thank you for uh, covering my butt uh, at late hour. Uh, I will see what happened to snag it and get that fixed. So with that, uh, everybody have a good evening. We will see you in the chat rooms.